And now we're going to talk about database storage services, also very frequently used in distributed cloud applications. And they're used to store many small related entities. Um, you know, things like user profile information, um, orders, um, game score information, that kind of thing. And a lot of times database storage services, they offer a lot of features like the ability to do queries or joins, indexing, sorting of this information, maybe run stored procedures on the information. Maybe there's viewers that you can go and look at the data or editors where you can go and modify some of the data manually. That's really good for administrative tasks. Um, I used to work with a company that did subscription services and sometime a person would call on the phone and say, hey, I had a problem this month and we would comp them another month of the subscription service. So we would go into the editor and we would just say, all right, they're good for one more month for free. And, uh, and it was easy to do and it worked great, right? Um, in today's day and age, there's really two main categories of database storage services. We have relational databases, sometimes referred to as SQL, um, and these require very expensive PCs in order to get better size and performance characteristics. So if you have a lot of data that you want to store, you have to scale the hardware up in order to do this. That is by a bigger PC that has more hard disk, more CPUs on it, and so on. Same is true if maybe you don't have a lot of data, but you want to access the data in it with a very high performance. Then again, you might want to have more CPUs in there so you can run more requests in parallel against it. Relational databases are really good for storing relational data, right? Data that has relationships. Like I have a customer record, and this customer has placed a sequence of orders over time. So for a given customer, we want to look up their orders. So we have customer and we have order information and there's a relationship between those two things. And relational databases, they support things like sorting that data. I want to sort all the orders maybe from the cheapest to the most expensive or maybe I want to sort the orders based on the time of when that order was placed. Um, and you can do joins and then a lot of times these databases have ACID semantics for doing ACID transactions, so I can update the orders and the customer information atomically as a single unit. I have much more to say about uh, transactions and ACID semantics coming up a little bit later on. The other big kind of database that's gaining lots and lots of uh, excitement in the database world today and is being used more and more frequently are non-relational databases, otherwise known as NoSQL stores. In these uh, databases, the data that you have is spread across many cheap or inexpensive PCs, right? So it's a very different uh, uh, topology for your hardware, if you will, for these. And these are really great for things that don't have relationships with one another. So I might just store a customer's preferences in a database table somewhere, or I might store what's currently in the customer's shopping cart or maybe just product catalog information. These are the products I sell. Here's a description of it. Here's the cost of it. Um, or just session state for a particular person and whatever session they might be currently having with my service, et cetera. The great thing about non-relational databases is that they tend to be far, far cheaper than relational databases to run. They also tend to run a lot faster um, they also can hold a lot bigger data, so they can scale much bigger in terms of the amount of data they can hold. They also have very flexible data models. So from a programmer's perspective, working with a non-relational database tends to be a lot easier because you don't have to model relationships in your programming language of choice. You're really just modeling individual rows or items which basically if you're using an object-oriented language is the equivalent of an instance of an object that's sitting inside your program. So it becomes very easy from a programmer's perspective to work with these models. Now of course there are some downsides. It's not great for working with data that has relationships with one another. You typically cannot do ACID transactions when manipulating two items that have a relationship. Again, I'll be talking much more about this as we continue the conversation. Um, it is believed that relational and non-relational databases will coexist for years to come. And as I said uh, earlier in this course, it's really quite common for a service to use multiple database engines. So you might have some data that you consider to be relational that you'll put into a relational database. You may have other pieces of data that's not relational and you can put that into a non-relational database. And both of those can be managed by the same or single instance code. 
Uh, and that's also a quite common thing for people to do. And it allows you to have a better programming experience um, using the relational database because it can do joins for you and sorts and indexing for you, but you're paying a little bit more for it. But you can have some of the data that's non-relational stored in this cheaper data store that's maybe a little bit faster, uh, but you don't need the kind of relationships and acid transactions on it. And really, you can mix and match to your heart's content in order to build the service that's going to work for you in terms of latency and in terms of cost and in terms of programmer effort. This is a picture that gives you a kind of a graphical view of the compare and contrast of a relational database versus a non-relational database. On the left-hand side is what a typical relational database looks like. We have this relational database here. It effectively has single partition in it. And it's capable of performing very complex uh, CRUD, like create, read, update, and delete operations. It can also do things like joins and sorts and execute store procedures. You can have transactions that span across tables, right? So it's a very comprehensive uh, database that's a, pro, able to provide you a lot of really nice features that programmers love. But then you have a lot of service instances, which are maybe your stateless services here, that are talking to this stateful service or storage service back end. The problem is as you scale this up, the number of stateless services, they're still all talking to the same stateful back end. And that makes the stateful back end or the storage service, it makes it a bottleneck. More and more requests are coming into it and it ends up being a bottleneck. You're putting more data in it, you're giving it more requests, and it's uh, potentially adversely affecting the performance of all the instances up above. So it doesn't scale very well. And the only option you have to make this scale better is to buy bigger and bigger piece of hardware that can hold more data, have more CPUs in it, make the CPUs run faster. That's the way you get this thing to scale up and it tends to be you know, a big problem. So that's where these non-relational or NoSQL databases have come into play. So using a non-relational database, you would take your data and you would split it up into multiple partitions. So if these are people, I might put everybody you know, uh, whose last name is A through J in partition one. And everybody whose last name starts with a K through R goes in partition two. And S through Z goes into partition three, you know, just to give an arbitrary example. Or maybe my partitions are divided by state. Everybody in Washington state's in partition one. Everybody in California is in partition two, and so on. Right, so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this partitioning, but how you partition your data is super, super, super critical. I cannot stress that enough. Um, but again, we'll talk a little bit more about it later on. With, these, with your data partitioned like this, each partition typically runs on its own machine. So this big rectangle is a logical relational database but it's really being spread across multiple physical machines. So partition one's in one PC, partition two's in another PC. And of course you could add more PCs to this and you could remove some PCs from this and that can, uh, you know, how you can affect your scaling with the amount of data you have. Partition one, if we say that's the Washington State partition, then any of the front end stateful services, they will only go to partition one if they're working on people who live in Washington state. And they will only go to partition two if they happen to be working with people who live in California. You know, if you say there's 50 states and your service is only available to people in the United States, you could have 50 partitions. Uh, so if you had a complete equal distribution of customers across those states, that means that each machine is only doing 1 50th of the amount of work. You could, of course, combine multiple states together and say partition two is for Oregon and Nevada, let's say. Um, you know, so that would get, allow you to reduce the amount of hardware that you had for the partitions. And if you didn't have a lot of customers in Oregon and Nevada, maybe partition two is enough hardware that it can handle that in a responsive way. All right, so there's a lot of uh, flexibility here and how you slice and dice your partitions across the hardware. And that's really one of the great things about a NoSQL database. But in terms of functionality, while it's great in terms of scaling up this data and it's great in terms of the performance of accessing the data, the co other kinds of operations you can do are really quite limited. 
mostly uh, NoSQL databases support simple CRUD operations. You can't do things like joins and sorts. Um, and the reason is because sorting would, the entire database, would require accessing all the partitions, which means you would have to go to all the machines, which means you would have to do a bunch of network hops across all the machines. And so, since not all the data resides on a mach single machine, sorting all of that data ends up being an incredibly expensive operation in terms of time. Um, so, if you need to do things like sorts and indexing and higher level things, then that is typically done by the stateless services on the front end, not by the database engine on the back end. So if you need to do things like joins and sorts, etc., you end up having to write that code yourself instead of having that code being written for you by the database vendor. So the programmer experience is easier when talking about the individual entities, but if you have to perform these kinds of operations, the programmer experience tends to be more complicated. It is best if you can implement your service in such a way that you can avoid things like joins and sorts. And in many cases, you can. So that's what makes non-relational databases really useful. They're cheaper, they're faster, the programming model is simple as long as you don't need the complex functionality, and in many scenarios, you do not need the complex functionality. All right, we'll take a closer look at partitioning and replicas and other things related to the database, uh, database storage engines um, as we continue the conversation.